attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's presentation sponsored by Precision International. Also would like to tell, thank the following sponsors, Whatever It Takes, Transtar, Ray Bestest, Bow Body Pro, ATRA, and Gears Magazine. These sponsors are the ones that make it possible to bring these webinars to you guys for free. Precision International has received a GM Supplier of the Year Award for three consecutive years in a row. Also, as Precision International being a main sponsor, they are, they are offering a free uh, flash drive with over 80 plus tech tips, service videos, and things to help us. Information to your left is a way to get, get that flash drive, 1-800-872. 6649. Email jslazo at transmissionkits.com or text 631 245 3375. That information should be in your handout. Also, they're going to repeat it again uh, in their short video. Uh, thank you, Precision International, for being a great sponsor. If you have any questions, Comments, concerns, um, please feel free to text them in at any time on the question tabs on your right. If you need to download the PDF handout, go ahead and do that. There's a red tab on the right-hand side, PDF download. It should say like A6 MF1 Rebuild PDF. Uh, click on that to save it to your computer. Also, this uh, webinar will be also on the ATRA uh, website. Um, usually probably by, by Monday or so, uh, the website should be up and have it on. If you have any questions, comments, um, or any suggestions, you can feel free to email those or anytime at webinars at ATRA.com. Thanks again, Transtar, Whatever It Takes, Precision International, Val Body Pro, Ray Bestis, ATRA, and Gears. Precision International has been proud to have been named a GM Supplier of the Year for three consecutive years. Visit our website, transmissionkits.com, for up to date product tips and alums featuring 80 plus tech and service videos at transmissionkits.com. 3 1 at Precision. 2 and 3, a same thing. Um, they are very close to being the same at all. We're going to be into the inside of the transmission, clutch clearances, uh, drums, uh, gear trains, uh, valve body, those kind of things today. Uh, you'll find this transmission in the Kia and the Hondas. It's a six-speed front-wheel drive. Uh, here's the, the list of Hondas applications that this transmission's fit in. Uh, we're probably seeing these in the shop already. Uh, the Accent, the Lantara, Santa Fe, or yeah, Santa Fe, Sonata, um, the Tucson. Over in the Kia, we see it a lot in the Forte, Sedona, Sorrento, Soul, and Sportage. Usually around 2010, 2012, uh, and these models of cars will come out with the six speed. All right, for the clutch supply chart, um, to me, I, I look at this as a GM six speed. Um, to make things first, neutral and drive. They did that to keep the uh, park to reverse engagement delay. Um, you shouldn't have any delayed reactions or delayed engagements uh, because of this clutch itself because it's on as soon as you start the vehicle. Your 3 5 R clutch is just that. It's on third, fifth, and reverse. Your overdrive clutch, I call it the 4 5 6 clutch because it's on just that on fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. Your one-way sprag, uh, it is in effect in first gear. The low reverse clutch, as you see here, is going to be released at roughly five miles per hour or so. 
uh, when that clutch releases, the one-way clutch has to hold or it will, will uh, slip. As you see here, I got this Portland Torque products for broken, uh, broken. Here's your ATF temperature sensor. If this temp sensor unplugs from this ribbon, it's the early design and you want to do uh, whatever it takes in Transtar. Both have these in stock. Last time I've contacted them, uh, they, they kept the, the ribbons in stock for us. So give them a call to get your ribbon. Update this every time you get this cover off. If you're changing the solenoid, it's most likely this ribbon. It's not the solenoid. That's not 100% every time, but 90 I'm going to say a good 90% of the time that ribbon's the fault, not the solenoid. To get the ribbon off, remove the bolt hole or bolts labeled A. And one that's not broke, the plastic would be going right here to this bolt too. So remove the bolts that are labeled with the A. Fold this whole harness up. Remove your bolts uh, labeled B. And the valve body will come down. It'll drop down about a half an inch or so to get this roll pin out of here for the manual valve. Uh, probably a good idea to get this little wheelie bar, the detent spring, out of there to make it a little bit easier. You don't have to, but it, it does make it easier. Please, if you guys have questions throughout, throughout the um, webinar or any comments, let me know. Here's the case passers clutch. Both have rubber uh, seals. Here's the passage for your 3.5R reverse, your 2.6 brake. Over here. For the most part, uh, it's useless testing these or, or stuff out of that. You're reducing two and one. Um, these go basically to, they are a dead end. They go straight to end pl or, uh, pressure port plugs. Uh, it's great they have the pressure port plugs, but um, air test wise, it's a useless dead hole. Nothing to do there. Get over to the next screen, get rid of this pointer. There we go. Actually, I want to back up, sorry. Um, under the two bolts for your ribbon, remove those two bolts. Transfer gear is off the center here. Input speed sensor is right, reading off the rear. If you guys interchange cores or have speed sensors laying around, you need to make sure these speed sensors are the same color right here because this it makes a difference. On the length of the sensor itself, you do not want to interchange, put the wrong one in there, grind the end of the sensor off, and have wiring wrapped everywhere throughout the transmission. So that they change from models. If you refer back to February 2018 earlier webinar, it talks about different part numbers and uh, how to ID these speed sensors. There are a bunch of different. Um, gear heights and speed sensors inner valve body see right here that they are labeled on what they are a verse and the uh, ud um, in the center of the case on the last screen here you have your accumulators you have your bolt lengths here the accumulator springs don't get them mixed up if you do here's a chart for you it tells you which color to go which goes in which location in the spring um height by width by the diameter of the wire usually they're color coded here um so take a picture of them when you when you take the transmission uh valve body apart um if there's any difference one so far i haven't found any but i'm sure there's some different colored valve bodies out there inner valve body um all the dampeners are checked back. Spring goes in first, ball on top. All the dampeners, spring on the bottom, dampener on top. Neutral drive accumulator, check this bore, make sure there's no ridges in there. You could air check this about right here. Um, make sure it, it applies good. The other, the uh, lockup switch valve. Check, to, check this plug and check this valve for wear. Make sure there's nothing. I haven't seen a huge amount of wear there. But that's one area that I would like to check for TCC problems. 
UD sleeve right here. Uh, this sleeve seals on this valve right there. So we'll definitely want to check that for wear. Uh, th those areas haven't been a huge issue for uh, me. I'll, I will point out some uh, valve body wear issues on this slide. The biggest issues that we have on the next slide, there's going to be another valve or the reducing valve one and two bore has a uh, Sonics valve for you. Transco has actually came out with a, a new kit Not real well for me. Um, you will basically ream this valve out kind of like Sonics does, but without the, the jig. But you ream this valve out here. They give you a sleeve and they give you two springs and valves for the Transco kit. Also, Sonics, their tools work great. You have the fixture. You bolt this, this whole valve body down into the fixture, line it all up, and ream this valve bore. And then you can get your uh, aluminum valve from Sonics. It, matter what kit you use or valve you use, make sure you address that bore. It's going to have to be done. Uh, don't mess with the adjustments unless the parts that you are installing says to. 789 are your clutch switch valves. They uh, haven't seen many issues here, but those are just switching valves. Check the unplugs, those kind of things. Make sure you don't see anything weird there. This is your TCC valve. We always like to check those, especially for wear. Um, these are just basically switch valves over here. I haven't seen much wear. Number 14, um, TCC control pressure. This would be another one you want to take a look at. Not a big issue, um, but while we're into it, let's check it. This valve body is that dark gray. It seems like it has a, a hardened coating on it. Uh, for the most part, the valve body is okay, except uh, the reducing valves they like to wear very quick. Here's the back side the middle valve body. You have one screen, dampener and spring. Uh, spring goes in first. Valve body, the outside. Number 21 over here is the other reducing valve that I was talking about. Need to check this valve. So come up with which kit you want to use and address this issue. Number 20 is your pressure regulator valve. It has an adjustment there. Do not adjust that unless told to. Just like the 09G, we got linear solenoids up here. The S2 is for your 35R. This is your, your clutch control valve. The S3 is your 26 brake. This is a 26 brake control valve. The S4 is your underdrive, underdrive uh, control valve. And the S5 is your overdrive. And it's the overdrive control valve. So just like the 09G transmission, you got your control valve, clutch control valves that's sending pressure right directly to the clutch themselves. You don't want to mess with these adjustments out here uh, unless you have to because of a shift quality issue. But leave these in the board. Don't take them out. Um, or if you do take them out, you're going to have to measure the depth of them and put them back to the same height. On all these linear solenoids, um, all of them are linears except the S6 here and the S7. Both those are on-off, so the on-off solenoids are 10 to 11 ohms. All the rest of solenoids, these five, and the pressure control over here, uh, are all 5.1 ohms. So there's a spring size for you. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I like this valve body. Pretty basic in my opinion. I like to always air check also. But air test, DOD clutch, check your clutch clearance, check your rides on the, the, the cover itself. Rear end plays 8 to um, 17 thousandths. One reason why I like to air check on the, see this sleeve. It's a steel sleeve on aluminum there. Whenever I see that, I always get kind of sept um, scared, make sure it doesn't rotate. I haven't seen it, but that's why I always like to air check uh, while I'm pulling units down 
Uh, it's kind of one of my things, I guess. Alrighty, so here's the overdrive clutch drum disassembled and retainer bonded balance piston, the 2000s. Here's your uh, clearance, 49 to 61 thousandths. The snap ring is selective on this clutch. We have an apply plate on the bottom. Four steels, five clutches. Let's see, next slide here. There we go. Here's your overdrive snap ring part numbers and the different thicknesses of those part numbers. Looking into the transmission uh, on the other side, we have your Sprague uh, roller clutch base. It'll set up on your bench. Then the outer race of this Sprague will freewheel clockwise, lock counterclockwise. So one inter interesting thing about this transmission is what they're doing for the, the hand side. You'll get splash oil from the, the lubrication. We'll get caught in these dams. The dams will then feed oil to the pins that are inside the planets and oil your planet pins. Uh, nice design. Just make sure your material is cleaned out of those dams. Uh, the unit I pulled apart was full of all kinds of uh, clutch material from the lockup clutch coming apart. Um, but, but it was packed full. So make sure those are nice and clean uh, and, and you get all the debris out of it. Slide. Snap ring openings up, up at the 1 o'clock position. You, you have three seals here that are the same size and then one smaller one. So you have four seals in the back cover here. A bit different than what uh, the factory does. Assemble this piece by piece, which I think is very hard to get that thing um, incorrect. The front side right there. You get uh, inward, and you'll be able to pull this hub straight off. Uh, just jiggle it a little bit. It'll come off fairly easy. Right here, you see the splines. It's a fairly loose fit. Uh, fit. And then on the selective tab here, the screwing tab is the height is selected here for gear train. Here's a better picture of the oil dams, kind of shows you. Snap ring here on the outside, pull that snap ring out is 98 thousandths. It is going to. Uh, planets on these are, are, to me, they look fairly good quality. Um, I like the way they have their lubrication designed on them and big size pins decent built planet looks like you know, i haven't seen any issues with them here's the part numbers for your gear train end play and the selectives uh the height of the selective washers all right to keep on removing the gear train up uh, down breaking it down we are going to have to remove the outer ring gear here Pull the snap ring that we squeezed off earlier, pull that off, and uh, remove this ring gear. Once we get that ring gear removed, you're going to want to get this snap ring, or this Torrington bearing right here. Uh, remove, lightly ply, and work your way up. That's a pretty tight fit. There's a gap, um, kind of like the other one. You want to get all that debris and material out. Check these roll pins. Make sure they're still there. Make sure they're tight. Um, these hold the pins in for the planetaries themselves. You don't want those rotating or, the, or they will come apart, of course. Normal planet inspections, check the end play, check for pitting on the gear, those kind of things. This unit that I had, um, the tag on it said like 170,000 miles on it. But I was really surprised on the inside. This, this transmission was in very good shape. Actually, a broken bill came out of a wreck, and wreck vehicle is what I was thinking. All right, gear train stack up. I uh, can't really intermix or miss, match any of these bearings. They only fit in one location. Uh, I tried to mismatch these uh, locations, and, and they you can't do it. So lip on this center, 
uh, gear here goes the lip goes into the gear each one of these shafts you're gonna want to check your bushings so there's a bushing underneath here and on each end of these sun gears as you see these are bushing marks for where the from this gear here so check your four bushings and the bushing ceiling uh, surface area the lips go to or the sun gear on the rear ring gear your race goes against the planet the bearing goes against the rear ring gear itself all right there we go going down farther into the case and this is why i say it's easier in my opinion to uh pull this whole the whole thing clutch in so you just remove that snap ring and everything pulls straight out of it. All right. This is 80 to 92 thousandths. Pressure plate, five clutches, five steels. 62 thousandths cushion. Keep in mind the 62 thousandths. I'm going to flip back and forth here in the next couple slides because the factory has this uh, confusing way of doing it, of getting clutch clearances. We have apply a plane on the bottom. Snap ring, return spring, and a piston, all that goes in the case there. So clutch clearances, uh, what the factory has you do is a joke, and I know I will probably never, ever see it done. They want you foot pounds um, onto the clutch itself and measure the clearance. Okay, so we're not going to be doing that. What I'm going to do, or what we should do, in my opinion, is stack the clutch assembly together. So, stack everything together, exceed it out. Measure the clearance between this snap ring and this pressure plate, and see what you come up with. I came up with 144 thousandths. So 144,000 uh, measures of clearance. That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Here's the distance. Anybody got any questions uh, on that afterwards? All right. So we're gonna flip the transmission over. Uh, there's two spots, two uh, two slots. Very easy to put a screwdriver in there, pry, pry on both sides, to remove the front case half off. This is what it looks like when you get your case half off. You have your four seals uh, on the right hand side. Those are all the same size. Then you have a wider one uh, over by the transfer gear. Left hand side, you see the two seals uh, for the spider gear. One of them's an O ring on the outside there, the inner one's on the inner spider gear. I will show you that a, lot, uh, a little bit later. So check your bearing races and bearings on your diff and your transfer gear. Pull your pump out. Uh, the filter will be attached to that. You can remove the filter while the pump's still bolted in there. I selected to do it this way. To me, it's a lot easier than trying to get the Allen in there. Three tab washer in the back of the pump. Check your ceiling rings. And of course, check your uh, ceiling ring surface for the inner ones. All right, so. Check your front stator bushing. Check the surface like we would on any pump. Check your ceiling rings here. Air check your drums. You want to air check your 3-5-R reverse and your 2-6 brake. Here again, we got a steel outer sleeve. The ceiling rings right in. And you got an aluminum housing. So air check this stuff when you're pulling it apart. Make sure everything air checks great and looking for any leaks or possibly rotated sleeve, something along those lines. Here's your pump disassembled. Um, two ID marks on your pump gears, so we want to check our pocket as we usually do. Pump uh, gear height, make sure it's correct. Two, two ID marks are facing you. And a notch on the uh, piston. If you don't line these up, it's very hard to get this uh, back together. And there's another little trap. 
for the most part, this is a pretty builder friendly unit. My clutch clearance stack ups. I didn't show you the factory specs on here because nobody's going to do it. Um, what I did here, the distance between the piston and the bombing rates gauge, I got 32 thousandths minus the 65 thousandths for the thickness. And it came up with 67 thousandths um, clearance. So that's the best way of doing clutch clearance on, on these two clutches. You could probably also do, um, not necessarily on this one, but the other one you could probably do piston travel too. Let's get it changed over here. There we go. Two six break breakdown. You got your pressure plate on the bottom. It has a step on it. The step goes downward. Drum, steel piston, fingers go up. Other clutches. So you have five external and five internal clutches. And a ply plate. And an 85 or 86,000 snap ring. Measured clearance in this drum. On this drum, I couldn't find any in any of the Kia Hyundai books that I had for this clutch. So I assume it's not adjustable on this clutch for some odd reason. Um, but what I came up with was with 40 thousandths. Uh, none of my clutches were burnt. They're, this was in good shape. Here's your hubs and washers. Um, the underdrive clutch hub. This, this hub splines into your underdrive clutches. Two tab thrust washer. Two six clutch. Enters go into your three five hours clutches. Round part of this thrust washer faces the hub. The flat, smaller side faces the drum itself. Underdrive clutch um, housing. So now we're, we're looking down into the front of the case again. And the two six clutches fit right here. Pressure plates. So... On this, we have a selective snap ring, uh, pressure plate, three clutches, three steels, uh, retaining snap ring, spring, and just an aluminum housing, very, very easy to crack. Um, this housing has some issues of this area right here being rough and likes to wear out the inner seal on that piston. Uh, make sure you uh, replace that housing, especially if that piston seal was worn down um, that problem has been corrected in the later models of so 2010 2011 i believe 2012 those are the three years with the most problems um, after that it's been fixed also note these larger torques bolts out here on the outside remove those to get your transfer gear um, assembly and retainer out So here, once you're moving, a couple OE part numbers for tools for the A6 MF1, A6 MF2. I found them on eBay, Amazon for roughly 65 to 80. If you were suppliers, a call, see if they stock these things. To me, it wasn't a big issue. I just marked the nut um, where, where the location was, took it, and then... I uh, just tapped it off with a um, a punch. Uh, this this retaining ring underneath locks the uh, locks the nut, so you can't move it. So you gotta knock the little finger back to to get off the uh, the nut itself before you knock it out with with a punch. But to me, it, tool isn't necessarily. It would make it definitely easier if you if you were doing a bunch of these. Uh, one interesting thing, I, I thought there was no shims in this um, to set preload. So the bearings stacked on top of each other. You see at the bottom of this bearing here, let me give me a tool. Right here, this little ledge hits the bottom of this bearing here, the, this race, and that's what comes up to your preload. So if you have a bearing issue, you're going to be changing... Uh, the bearings themselves, then you're going to be changing this whole center support here because this is all machined together. There is no removable races uh, at all.
transfer gear, two tapered gear, park pole, uh, latches into that transfer gear that's made it made it together. I didn't take uh, the end of the park pole stuff apart when I pulled this unit apart. I'm sure it's not very difficult, but I and this this park pole came out with no issues. differential um this differential i felt was quality built it actually had some good points to it um remove your ring gear then you'll have two little tapered screws holding these two pieces together remove those uh, torque screws so this spider gear housing is very large it's roughly i'm gonna say about two and a quarter inches on the outside of it here so for this to wear in this differential housing itself uh for axle sag problem i don't see happening very well this thing had quite a few miles on this unit and it looks like brand new when i took it apart um so pull your spider gears apart you will definitely want to do this and check for wear on your washers these three pins hold the um spider gear pins in so this is a partial pin right here it only goes halfway this is a halfway pin over here, and this is a full pin. On your spider gears, there's two seals on your spider gears. There's an inner one, and there's an outer one. The one on the left there is uh, an O-ring. It basically, its job is to keep dirt, debris, and water from the outside of the transmission getting into the splines of the axle and the spider gear. The seal on the right-hand side um, is basically a molded cut plug. It is its job is to keep ATF out of the axle spline area itself and keep ATF leaking. Then of course you'll have uh, seals in the case that seal the spider gear itself too. So I think it's an improvement. It looked like it's well built and this thing had a lot of miles and I seen zero wear on it. So I think this, the differential is an improvement, like you said. Here's spec specification on employees, clutch clearances, and torque specs on this page here. Alrighty, so thank you, sponsors. Thank you, Precision International, for the main sponsorship of this webinar. We always appreciate your support and everybody, please thank the Precision for their support in making these webinars free for you guys. Also, Valve Body Pros, uh, they came out with a valve body to change roughly the 47 RE valve body over to the 48 RE valve body on the way they're doing it. Kind of an interesting concept how they're doing it through the plate. Uh, valve Body Pros uh, came out with that. So thank you, Valve Body Pros. Ray Bestest, you're always there for us. Thanks, Ray Bestest. Great products, always great support. Uh, please choose Ray Bestus when you have a chance. Transstar and Wit, of course, they're always here to back each and everybody up. Uh, keep our shops stocked with great parts. Thank you, Transstar and Wit. March 6th will be our next webinar. Um, it's going to be the 5AT uh, introduction um, to the 5AT transmission uh, and the Subarus. Also, that will be uh, our last, last webinar, we are going to do something a little bit different and kind of change things up. I'll be looking forward to it, and I'm sure you guys will be looking forward to what we're going to be doing. Uh, announcements should be made uh, at a later day. It's going to be interesting. I think everybody will like it. Thanks again, Transfer, whatever it takes. Ray Bestis, Val Body Pro, and Precision International. You guys keep making it great. Any more questions or concerns? I can take those in, uh, questions now. I don't see any questions. I thank you guys for your time. If you do have any questions, let us know. Uh, you have a great day. Enjoy.